Welcome to Sharpen Your Chess Tactics. This is a series where you can improve your pattern recognition, calculation, and thought process by solving tactical positions and then comparing your analysis with mine. Hello chess fans. This is our starting position for uh, Sharpen Your Chess Tactics number five. And here it is white to move, so go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. Let's get back to it. I hope that you had a chance to solve the problem and write down your analysis. And uh, let's go over this position. Uh, first off, there are a few notable features of this position. First, we see that uh, white is attacking black's rook on a8. Second, uh, we can see the relative looseness of both kings. Uh, black also has a hanging pawn, or a, <coughs> I'm sorry, a hanging uh, knight on f4, and finally we see our rook is immobile here, and that this pawn is also hanging at the moment. So uh, these are at least some of the main uh, features of the position that you might have considered when you were an analyzing it, and I guess uh, we would have to look at a couple um, options in terms of our uh, first uh, candidate move. And, uh, you know, at one point we, we should see what happens with bishop takes a8. Um, but we also see there's this danger here. So we would win an exchange here, but we also see this danger here of black taking here on d4 and then winning uh, the exchange over here. Um, but let's take a look at bishop takes a8 because I think we can eliminate this, eliminate this pretty quickly as a uh, candidate move because after... Bishop takes a8, queen takes a8, comes with check. And even after we block here, then I think it's just hard to continue with this because uh, black has a lot of options in terms of uh, attacking the king's side and mobilizing against uh, white. So at the very least, this wouldn't necessarily give white a big advantage. So uh, we would keep this uh, maybe in the back just in case, because we are winning the exchange, but I think it's very temporary because white has uh, his own problems if he were to take this uh, rook on a8, okay? So seeing that bishop takes a8 is a little bit of a problem, uh, we need to see if we could solve that, because if we could, uh, we would win the exchange here. Uh, so uh, we also see this problem here, and it's looking for moves that solve this. So um, we might have found this fairly quickly, and here are the problems you need to solve. You need to cover this diagonal with uh, something, okay, so that you could then be free to take this rook here. The other issue here is this pawn is hanging at the moment, so is there a way to protect that, okay, and then also that this uh, rook is um, trapped and immobile at the moment. And then finally, is there a way that we can attack this, some type of a uh, double attack? And there's one move that actually does all of these things, and that is queen to e4. Okay, it attacks this knight, it now frees this rook, it protects this pawn, and now we are free to actually win this rook if we get a chance. So um, what we need to, so hopefully you got that move, and but in your calculations you might want to find out what you would do next. Um, and the main candidate you would look here it would be something where black moves his rook because you can see here he's, he might lose this knight but if he moves the knight back he's going to lose the rook and not just the exchange but the whole rook so uh, the main candidates would there would be rook to a7 and rook to b8 and without going into too much calculation uh, you would probably black would more naturally go to uh, b8 because it would still protect the back rank and it's also protected by the queen. So uh, I think in your calculations you wouldn't really consider rook to a7. So rook to b8 and then the, the next question is to what to do from here. Now if you did not get queen to e4, again maybe pause this video and then see what you would do next as white's next move. Okay now there's a few um, issues here, and or a few uh, still remaining elements of this position. Uh, again, both kings are still fairly um, loose here, so 
your tactics might revolve around attacking it. Um, I think you can see here that it's not safe to retreat this bishop either. So a uh, couple things come to mind would be to either attack the king somehow, because we can see here it's on this open file, or to do something else such as taking this knight. Now let's take a look at the first option, which is rook to g1, which would have now pin this with um, maybe the threat of um, coming, you know, sacrificing and then bringing this other rook in to attack. And that's actually what happened in the game in this position. And uh, let me just show you that real quick and what happens there. And that is from the game uh, Kopolov Kengis, uh, two masters um, around the 20, 2400, 2500. Uh, rating range, and this is from a tournament in Hamburg, Germany in 2005. And here, um, Black played the move d6, and that is a, a prophylactic move, the idea being that after uh, Rook takes g7 check, which was played in the game, King takes g7, now White does not have this check here on e5. Okay, in the game, uh, White played rook to g1 check, and after king to h8, uh, played queen takes f4. And then after e6, and again, um, freeing the queen now to protect the f6 square, uh, queen to g4 was played to threaten checkmate on g7. And then after uh, queen to f8, simply c, or c takes d6, threatening to... Um, push this pawn forward and promote it. So at that point in the game, black resigned. However, if we go back um, to rook to g1, this actually is a mistake. Um, this is not the, the best move to play in this position. In fact, it, it is a losing move because black has to counter attack knight b to d3. And hopefully you can see that there is a checkmate threat with knight takes f2. And then just a quick analysis, and we'll get back to the original position. After uh, rook a to f1 to protect against mate, um, black could play d5. And admittedly, the uh, chess engine helped me to find this move. With uh, And again, it's just to strike out against this queen to prevent... Uh, again, the threat here is rook takes uh, g7 check with then a follow-up check and, and maybe a check here. Um, and then after... Uh, C takes d6 on passant, queen takes d6. We see that every, all the bases are covered, and a um, any type of sacrifice here would be uh, ineffective in, in terms of checkmating the king. Okay, so going back just to the game, uh, rook to g1 was played, and maybe you saw that as one of your options, but then knight b to d3 uh, both protects this knight and also threatens checkmate, and everything is fine for black in that position. So let's go back. So after rook to b8, the the best move here, and, and again, you need to look a little further, would be queen takes f4. Now naturally you might think to yourself, well, he could now play rook takes b7. And it's this point in the calculation where it can get a little bit tough to look forward, but we need to see, again, looking at it from not just a bunch of moves that we're trying to randomly calculate, but what are the features of the position that we can utilize? And again, the main feature here is, again, this, this um, weakness of the king. Uh, so the next move here would be rook to g1 and uh, threatening... You know, so let's, let me just say, let's say uh, this rook just goes back, and this is just as an example. Then uh, this is threatened, which is rook takes g8, g7 check, and after... King takes g7, rook to g1 check, and then after king to h8, then uh, queen to e5 is checkmate. Okay, so that is the, the threat, is that sacrifice on g7. So going back, so to defend against that, uh, black would have to play queen to f8, and then uh, we still have um, a little trouble now for, for black, because after rook takes g7 check, Queen takes or takes g7. We have rook to g1, painting the queen. Okay, and then if black takes back, the 
king takes back, and then let's say knight takes a2, um, we have a little bit of trouble here for, for the king, because after uh, king or queen to g5 check, if the king goes this way, queen to f5 check, and if he keeps trying to run away, we now have this very nice tactic where the queen threatens checkmate on g8, as well as um, hitting this rook here. Let me just give you an example. So let's say the rook goes back to get out of the way, queen to g8. Now, if we do this to prevent the checkmate, then we lose the rook. So we could see uh, that's how that goes. Now, let's go back here to queen takes f4, okay, and rook takes b7. The point here is that I don't necessarily, you, now if you saw all of that, that is, you did better than I did uh, when I first initially uh, calculated this position. Uh, but the idea here is to maybe see this next move, rook to g1, and seeing that after queen to f8, queen takes g7 check, and again, just so you know, if um, if you were to instead to play king takes g7, because we covered queen takes g7, then rook to g1 check, king to h8, and then queen takes f8 would be mate. So after queen takes g7 would be to see this uh, pin here. Okay, so um, maybe you saw that. Going after that, I think after that you can assess uh, that white would be winning with this queen against um, the two, uh, the rook and the knight. Because uh, white also has, let's see here, white also has um, an extra pawn to boot. So that would be the solution. And you didn't, it's, it's okay if you didn't see all of that. In fact, sometimes in our calculations, and I know uh, Kasparov uh, talks about this when he was analyzing or, or when he was uh, discussing his uh, famous, like a 20 move combination he had against Topalov. He only saw it about um, uh, six or seven moves ahead. And then as he made further moves into the combination, he was able to see further and further. So uh, when we're, even though we're developing our calculating skills and we're trying to look further uh, in practical terms, in terms of our games, uh, we only need to look far enough in order to uh, make the next move. So in, let's just look at our position here. After um, this position, we just have to see, well, first we have to see that taking on A8 is incorrect, but we have to see that queen to E4 uh, solves all of our positional problems and threatens and makes a, a big threat here. And after that, uh, we would look at rook to B8. So hopefully those first two moves were easy to see. And after that, we can look further. Um, when you're looking at queen takes F4, you would consider that rook to uh, that rook takes b b7, and then the next point after that would be to see that yes, you can attack now black's king, particularly with this pin to start off with, um, kind of building on each other. So that was kind of the idea behind picking this problem is uh, being able to um, combine our calculation, and, and and it's not always the case that we need to look uh, so many moves ahead. Now some of you may be able to look that far ahead. And again, that's great. There's obviously uh, many benefits to that. But for the rest of us, uh, we just need to be able to see the, the main elements of the combination and be able to uh, make the, the next move and then continue on from there in our combination. So, hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please press the like button. Uh, if you haven't done so already, also, um, check out my website, betterchesstraining.com, uh, where you can find some articles about improving in chess, uh, along with the videos you see here on YouTube. Uh, check that out, and I will see you soon.